you're going undercover as a Christian. You have no time to prepare. You're about to walk into a big church meeting or prayer group or whatever Christians congregate at. So your mission, if you choose to accept it, is to make conversation with this group of people for an entire evening and be welcomed into their fold. You know nothing about them except that they're Christian, they're white, and they're American. So my question for you is, what do you talk about? I mean, obviously you can nod along to a certain degree, but when it's your turn to bring up a subject, what subject do you bring up? What subject do you avoid? What political opinions do you pretend to have? And what do any of those things have to do with Christianity? See, I want to guess that the first things that popped into your mind for your undercover alter ego were things like criminalizing abortion, loving guns, pulling on bootstraps, and hating immigrants. In other words, you'd bring up shit that Jesus never talked about and avoid all the stuff he did talk about. I mean, look, I'm hardly the first person to point out the disparity between the Christian rights agenda and the teachings of Jesus. There's no doubt that the Jesus character, given the choice, would vote for the Democrat. But it's the kind of thing we have to bring up over and over again, especially as we cede ever more political autonomy to this ill-defined, ever-shifting concept of sincerely held religious beliefs. Because if these beliefs aren't grounded in your scripture, and they're not grounded in your history, and they're not grounded in your traditions, where the hell are the limits? Are we really creating a system where each Christian gets to make up their own laws as they go? I mean, look, of course, there's some shred of defense for most of their positions, but then again, there's a shred of defense for basically everything if your source is the Bible. I can justify rape, slavery, and genocide if I'm using the Bible, and I'd hardly be the first to do so in any of those cases. But these tenuous connections, rather than serving to justify their legal exemptions, just highlight the importance of abolishing them. When Holy Scripture comes into conflict with the law, it's not the fucking law that should bend. But even if you're not inclined to see it that way, which unfortunately is true of the majority of Americans, the overwhelming majority of Congress, and I think all of the fucking Supreme Court at this point, you have to see the cliff that we're barreling towards. This whole concept of exempting people from laws over sincerely held beliefs grows out of a Christian opposition to gay existence. Sorry, I know we're supposed to say it's opposition to gay marriage or whatever the most recent line in the sand is, but I'm inclined towards honesty in this instance. So yeah, it's just common knowledge at this point that hating LGBTQ people is a sincerely held religious belief, but it gets less ink in the Bible than the prohibition against eating fucking shellfish. Regardless, that was the initial justification, and on that one you can say, hey, at least their belief is grounded in their book. Okay, what about abortion? Right? There's nothing in the Bible in opposition to that. The Bible specifically says that the soul enters the body on its first breath and actually prescribes a magical abortion spell in Leviticus and tells you when you're biblically obligated to use it. And and those same apologists scratch their heads on this one a bit, but eventually they fall onto a justification from tradition. After all, Christians have vocally opposed abortion for half a century, even more if you're Catholic. Plus, you can bend a few of their moral precepts and redefine what constitutes a living being a little bit, and suddenly the Bible's a little less clear on the issue. And look, we don't actually have to delve further into this example. I'm I'm going to, but let's be clear at this point that we've already crossed over into insanity. If the only thing we need to justify an exemption to law is the fact that the Bible isn't super clear on it when we use atypical definitions, we've already given up on the whole concept of equality. And that's where we already are, but it gets even worse. Consider that they're now deploying the very same arguments against vaccination. That has no biblical justification, no history in the teachings of the church, no long tradition of political activism. It's just a case of we don't want to and we're Christian at the same time. The difference between the political and religious belief of the evangelical is simply semantic at this point. Everything they want an exemption to immediately falls under the umbrella of sincerely held religious belief because why the fuck wouldn't it? You know, and even though we all know they're making this shit up as they go along, and we can all point to the fact that two years ago, none of these churches had any goddamn issue whatsoever with vaccine requirements, they still confidently invoke the very same justifications. Because, hey, these justifications, as nonsensical as they are, already exempt them from taking pictures at gay weddings, filling trans people's prescriptions, and providing comprehensive health care to their employees. You know, protecting their right to side with a virus over humanity only differs in scale and scope. They've sincerely believed in harming others for the sake of their religiously inspired prejudices for centuries. I mean, sorry to depress you like this two weeks in a row, but it's not just the wall between church and state that's crumbling. We're also losing the wall between religion and politics. It's not the same thing. 
The former is the part where we like make make special laws that make all the non-Christians lesser citizens and then give their tax dollars to the church. The latter is the part where we just wrap the name Christianity around the platform of whichever party has the most Christians at the moment. And I can't honestly say which is more dangerous to lose, but losing them together is a worst case scenario.